From this to this. Amazing, right? We can see with our own eyes that over time, SpaceX's welding techniques have advanced to unprecedented levels. So, how did they upgrade these unflyable models into the world's most powerful launch vehicle that's now on the brink of reaching orbit? Let's find out everything on today's episode. To talk about Starship, we first need to understand that it's a massive structure built from stainless steel, held together by thousands of welds connecting its parts. It sounds straightforward, especially with Elon Musk's remark, lot of ways to melt and join steel. Mostly just needs to be welded consistently and with precise parts. But behind that simple statement lies a complex story of material, science, and welding engineering. When people think of rocket building, they often picture techniques like friction stir welding, a method NASA used in the space shuttle's construction. However, Musk dismissed the need for FSW on Starship, saying, Thankfully not. FSW is very difficult to get right and not needed with steel. This isn't a casual statement. It's grounded in a deep understanding of material properties. Starship is crafted from stainless steel, a material with an incredibly high melting point of around 1,400 degrees Celsius. In comparison, the Space Shuttle and many other launch vehicles used aluminum-lithium alloys, which have a melting point of only under 700 degrees Celsius. FSW works well with low melting point materials like aluminum alloys, but with stainless steel, it's not only inefficient, but introduces unnecessary technical challenges. But SpaceX didn't find the perfect path right from the beginning. When they started out, they were, in many ways, rocket builders without knowing how to build a rocket. So, with the Starship MK-1, they went with the simplest approach possible, flux cord arc welding, FCAW, a common industrial technique using standard welders. It uses the heat generated by the welding arc to join metals. An arc is formed between a specific flux cord wire electrode and the workpiece. The wire is continuously fed into the weld area, and as the filler metal melts, it fills the gap and fuses the two pieces. And the result? An infamously rough prototype in aerospace history, one that, unsurprisingly, never flew. However, this is just the SpaceX way. They quickly build, identify issues, and ask, what's going wrong here? What they realized right off the bat was the need for weld uniformity. This wasn't just about aesthetics. It was critical for a space-bound vehicle. And this is the result of their very first efforts to improve the early welds. In engineering, there's a basic principle. When two components of the same material are joined, the weakest point is often at the joint. For Starship, that weak point is precisely at the welds. In theory, each weld must match the surrounding base metal in strength. During launch, the entire structure is subject to massive mechanical stress from engine thrust, as well as intense vibrations and shock loads. Add to that, the extreme temperature shifts as the rocket ascends from the ground into space, creating immense thermal stress. The fuel tanks are under high pressure, while the upper stage also has to contend with vacuum conditions and space radiation, all of which bear directly on those welds. The initial FCAW technique SpaceX used created slag in the welds, leading to serious flaws like porosity and trapped slag. These uneven, bumpy welds became stress points, potential weak spots in the structure. The welds on the first Starship prototype suffered from significant corrosion, with visible cracks and sharp edges on the surface. So to tackle the challenge of these inconsistent welds, SpaceX initially used a temporary fix, grinding down the irregular regular welds to align with the surrounding material. While this approach helped improve weld uniformity, it was absolutely not a sustainable solution. This was the moment SpaceX realized they needed a major shift in their welding technology. SpaceX then transitioned from flux cord arc welding to the TIP-TIG technique. The innovation of TIP-TIG lies in its unique wire feeding system. This system creates high-frequency oscillations on the welding wire, a process precisely controlled with digital technology. These vibrations enhance the fluidity of the welding arc, allowing the molten metal to penetrate deeper and bond more uniformly in the joint. The result is deeply fused, consistent welds, with virtually no defects like porosity or trapped slag. One of Tip Tig's standout features is its preheating of the welding wire before it meets the main arc. This method significantly reduces the amount of heat required from the primary arc, minimizing thermal distortion and residual stress in the material. Just take a look at the welds on the nose cone of the V2 Starship to see the improvement. Critically, TIP-TIG technology doesn't just speed up the welding process. It also integrates seamlessly with automation systems. SpaceX has capitalized on this by deploying specialized welding robots to handle vertical weld seams and connect each ring into the cylindrical sections of Starship's structure. 
Currently, SpaceX is operating tip TIG in a semi-automated mode. This smart interim approach combines machine precision with the situational flexibility of human intervention. Yet, even this setup isn't the final answer. Elon Musk shared on X about the next leap forward for quite a long time ago, autogenous laser welding. He noted, best would probably be an autogenous laser weld, but we need more precise parts and fixtures. Autogenous laser welding represents the pinnacle of modern welding technology. This method uses a high-powered laser beam to create intensely focused heat right at the weld point, allowing the metal to melt and fuse without needing any external filler material. This offers a major advantage. Welds are made entirely from the base material, significantly reducing the risk of contaminants or defects that can come from added filler material. The precision and focus of the laser beam and autogenous laser welding allow for extremely fine, accurate welds with a much smaller heat-affected zone chase, than traditional welding methods. This is especially critical for preserving the mechanical properties of the material around the weld, an essential factor in ensuring the strength and reliability of a rocket structure. Laser welding technology holds the potential to revolutionize rocket manufacturing, especially when integrated with automated systems. The ability to pair laser welding with advanced robotics and automation tools enables welds to be executed with near-perfect precision and consistency, something even the most skilled human welders can struggle to achieve consistently. In practice, PIP-TIG welding still plays a leading role in the main welding stages. However, SpaceX has quietly rolled out laser welding for components demanding extreme precision, particularly smaller parts and complex internal structures within Starship. These laser welding processes are conducted entirely in controlled factory environments where conditions are optimized for maximum accuracy. SpaceX remains pretty tight-lipped about their manufacturing processes, especially around laser welding technology. No footage, no sneak peeks. I, for one, would love a bit more transparency, but well, trade secrets are trade secrets. SpaceX's journey in welding technology, from FCAW to TIPTIG, and now aiming toward autogenous laser welding, isn't just a story of technical advances in welding, it's also deeply tied to material science. This journey involves understanding how metals and welds react to extreme shifts in temperature and stress. That's why, along with advancing welding techniques, SpaceX has also been investing heavily in material science. You might recall they switched from 301 stainless steel to 304L, starting with the Starship SN8 model. This decision was based on the microstructure and composition differences in these steels, but SpaceX rarely settles for off-the-shelf materials. Around mid-2020, they began developing a proprietary stainless steel alloy known as 30X. According to Elon Musk's update on Platform X from May 21, 2024, it seems 30X is almost ready for its debut in space. In fact, there's a chance SpaceX has already tested some Starship parts made from 30X in recent flight tests. The interplay between materials, welding techniques, and other rocket components creates a fascinating story within the space industry. Are you interested in diving deeper into how SpaceX's scientists and engineers developed and optimized these interactions? Leave a comment below. As we saw in Flight 5, SpaceX encountered issues with spot welds on the Chinese section of the booster. These welds weren't strong enough, causing parts of the booster's outer shell to peel away, a serious concern since crucial valves and pipes lie right beneath. Currently, SpaceX doesn't rely on a single welding method for the entire rocket body. Instead, they're employing a diversified strategy, using a mix of welding techniques tailored to specific sections and requirements. This approach optimizes production time and conserves resources. With Flight 6 just around the corner, it's a pivotal chance to see if SpaceX has strengthened these spot welds on the Chinese. Have they enhanced the weld durability? If so, how? Most importantly, will these upgrades be enough to ensure the rocket's structural integrity? We'll see. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.